Bionic Learning Network, we have developed more than 45 projects over the last years. And we had our own kind of evolution, uh, especially if you look at the flying objects. We started in 2007 with the helium-filled ballonet with the wing, flapping wing mechanism. And then a scientist came to us and said, hey, you make everything right, why do you need the helium? Wouldn't it be possible without? And then we thought, okay, it might be possible to build a bird and we figured out that if we have the right persons together, it would be possible. So we came up with SmartBird in 2010, but also this bird was controlled with a remote control device, uh, very simple still. And we, th we searched for the next, the next challenge actually, and we came up with a dragonfly, which is uh, really an artist of flying in nature. And the Dragonfly, now our bionic optor, is the most agile flying object we have ever built with nine degrees of freedom, highly complex, but still remote controlled. And, but with a tablet, uh, which was already uh, one iteration further. And in 2014, we came up with the Emotion Butterflies. And those objects are uh, already able to fly fully autonomously even with four or five butterflies at the same time. And here below there are the prototypes uh, that show really advanced technologies like 3D printing, um, 3D MID electronics, things like that. And here we generate knowledge mainly that we can use also for the product development uh, within our company. So, but for today, I would like to give you some insights, how we work, uh, why we are successful with our work. And this methodology, actually, uh, we call it bionic thinking. So 10 insights of 12 years bionic learning network. And I start with the first insight, in my opinion, very uh, important work in interdisciplinary teams. And bionic itself is already uh, interdisciplinary discipline because as the name it says already, uh, biologists and technicians have to work together. And we do this very systematically in our uh, team. So we have control engineers, computer scientists, industrial designers, biologists, and uh, machine builders. And together we are able to generate new innovative ideas. And this seems to be so easy, but in reality, uh, in industry or in university, it's not really common to work in interdisciplinary teams. We still have the software development parts and the hardware development uh, very often split it, and we try to really change this. And uh, this is not only a lot of fun, you always can learn from uh, the other disciplines, and uh, it's really amazing. Uh, what, what we have learned and what we could achieve together. Secondly, find inspiring biological role models. And if you look at the chameleon, uh, you see various features uh, at the first sight. So, uh, for example, it can change the color, it can roll the eyes, and everyone knows the catapult effect in the tongue. But what we didn't know in the beginning when we have looked at the chameleon is that the tongue itself uh, actually can wrap around the insect and grips the insect very safe and secure. And this principle was copied uh, by us together with students of the University in Norway. And with this so-called flag-shaped gripper, we are now able to grip all kind of geometries or uh, even more objects at the same time. You can do a very simple grip out of a box without, a lot, without uh, a lot of control engineering, just due to this adaptive mechanism, actually. And uh, due to this very soft silicon cap, uh, it's also very safe and secure in the interaction with humans. So you cannot cr clamp in your fingers, for example. And this is also important. And with all these projects, we always start very quickly and easily. And I think this is a very effective approach because if you look at this very uh, simple prototype, you see it's just made of a, out of a toy for kids and a sewer pipe, but it shows already the function. Or if you look at this prototype, the first fish we made already in 2005 as a pre-model for the Arracuda. Actually, it was also made very simply just of very simple parts. Also with the kangaroo, we did this kind of 
early and easy prototypes to understand if we are able to build a real kangaroo uh, and uh, really understand the basic principles behind. Then uh, we try to incubate ideas and uh, put several irons into the fire. So this means it takes time to, to grow an idea actually and to finally make a real project out of it. So very often we start with, with the work of students, master thesis, bachelor thesis in, in several universities. In this case, one student made the bionic ant, the first ant uh, using SMA wires. Then we figured out that this actuator principle doesn't really work in our for our purpose, so we decided to switch to piezo elements. Then another student had to figure out how to control it, how to make the electronics for that. Uh, beside this, we found a really interesting sample of 3D MID. This is a 3D printed electronics uh, on a 3D molded housing, actually. And we came in contact with scientists in the University of Ulm that worked uh, a lot already with distributed control systems. And bringing this knowledge together actually enabled us to build the Bionic Ant, which is really a high complex robot uh, able to collaborate and to communicate completely autonomous. So therefore, all this knowledge is required and it took us time and several disciplines uh, had to work together uh, in order to be able to do this. Also, we very often pursue several goals simultaneously. So not only making a product is the own purpose or to, to earn money with this idea, we also have the, the idea that we want to fascinate youth for technology, for example, that we really want to learn from nature and to use the knowledge to enhance our creativity, for example. And imagine if you are asked to make a new product, it is really hard to start from a scratch because there are so many tasks that need to be fulfilled. A product should target market potential, it should be produced sustainable and recyclably, it should be inexpensive and robust, it should be of high quality, useful, user oriented and so on, and never ending list actually with requests. But this is really hard to start uh, actually from a scratch designing a new product. So we very often start with the concept first. And this concept should be innovative, it should be fascinating, it should be educational, inspiring, and then if it is successful, it can grow. And very often we, on the way, actually come up with new ideas. We develop, in this case, for example, algorithms that allow us, us to save energy, inspired by the idea of a kangaroo, actually. But in the end, we never sell kangaroos. But we can use these principles actually to save energy also in other products that are in the end not are any, not are family anymore with a real kangaroo. Uh, a next important thing is actually that we always try to constantly zoom in and out and think in iterations and variants. So therefore we have specialists in the group that take the eye on the big picture actually. They develop a division actually where we want to be. Uh, but uh, we also have the specialists that dive deep actually doing all the programming and the circuit boards uh, design and things like that. And in the end you need both. Yeah? You need the, the guys, the generalists that really think in big images, big steps. And you need the highly educated specialists uh, to generate innovative ideas and finally projects. Uh, and therefore, we have a framework at Festo, we have the playground uh, actually to, to go behind the horizon and to, to, to figure out what is possible. But you need also the freedom of the team, the openness and the self-confidence of all the, the members of the group. Um, they need to be, uh, have this, the courage to fail and the self-confidence to show these early prototypes to the decision makers, to ask for budget. Then together we need to take the risks sportingly. We need a lot of patience and frustration tolerance. And finally, everybody has to believe in the project. We try to divide the big problem actually into smaller problems and try to solve them with each iteration. So therefore we use tools uh, like uh, simulation, uh, FAM calculations. Uh, it's always a question how can you test 
actually your prototype. Sometimes you are lucky and uh, it looks really good at the very beginning, but very often we have we have fail, we fail, and then you need to improve constantly. Uh, you need to simplify the design uh, to improve control algorithms and figure out, uh, actually ask the right questions. Uh, why does it work? Why not? What can you improve? Have to find project partners, better components, things like that. And then finally, if everything works, uh, yeah, everybody's happy. Often it helps to define an 80% solution as a preliminary goal, because there's a rule. It takes about 20% of effort to achieve 80% result and it takes about 80% more effort to achieve the last 20% result. And due to new technologies like 3D printing, for example, we are able to come up very quickly with 80% solutions. And these solutions actually can be easily discussed with our customers, can be tested in real life. And then if we get the feedback from our customers, if they need it, uh, if the size is uh, the right size, um, then actually we continue the development process uh, and finally often after three four years more we then come up with a catalog product that is deliverable in 24 hours worldwide and with a robustness that is really needed in our field. Uh, next uh, recommendation I want to give is to always try to generate strong images and provide insights like we did with this Barnick cobot. You see this cobot is completely transparent and this was very important for us because we wanted to show that there are no motors inside, there's almost no electronics inside, so this is a pneumatically driven robot. It is completely different to all the other robots, so it was important that we really can see this at the very, very first sight. And this again uh, allowed us to get really a lot of media attention, a lot of customers came to the booth and really asked what is different on this robot. So this is very important to generate these strong images. And also we always try to provide insights, not only by making things transparent, but also by explaining why we did it, how we did it, and how it really works uh, in the end. And if you work in such interdisciplinary teams, it's always important to make all the achievements visible. So therefore we invite all the project partners, also the students, uh, to come with us to the fair, to demonstrate, to show the results and to get the feedback from the customers, from the audience directly back. So this is in my opinion, opinion important and really motivates us again to immediately start with the next project. So imagine, uh, like you can see here, if the booth is completely crowded and everyone is fascinated and interested in seeing your prototype, this is really um, a big emotional moment uh, for us and helps us to continue with this work. Last but not least, uh, I want to ask you to always focus on the essence of all things. Yeah? It's not only about the features a product has or has not. Uh, also, it's not only about the technology, even if we are very much fascinated by new technology. Most important, actually, that you focus on the essence, that you ask yourself, what is the potential of an idea? What can grow out of it? Uh, and this really helps also in your communication uh, if you need uh, to demonstrate your own ideas, if you want to ask uh, for investors or other uh, helpers that you need uh, to, to yeah, develop your own concepts. Focus on the essence. This is the most important thing. Mm -hmm.